Hey there! What's this? What's this? Another minimalist pen? What's this? What's this? It's another minimalist pen. Okay, uh, I, uh, I was sent these pens. Actually, Aziza was sent these pens, but I thought I would review them as well. Uh, they are from a company called Enso. Uh, I'm going to put them down, actually, because they are, some of them are really heavy. Sorry about the noise. Uh, they come in a very interesting box. We're talking about the Enso Piuma. Cute box, simple, works well, nothing wrong with that. And this was a Kickstarter project, but you can reserve these pens. So, as I understand it, they, I mean, they were sent to us during the Kickstarter. I didn't have time at the, at the time to record a review, but I'm doing it now. And as I understand it, they met their Kickstarter goal, and so you can reserve the pen now and then get them later when they are produced. So, what, what's, what's interesting about these pens? Well, they're minimalist pens. Minimalist pen is a little bit of a buzzword. Uh, I, especially on, on crowdfunding websites, I see a lot of minimalist pens. So, apparently that's, uh, that's hot. And this is one of them, the Puma. Um, interesting little pens. They come in three materials. And uh, they have a couple of nib options, which is uh, uh, quite nice. Um, so I'm going to show off these pens, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sound. But first let's have a look at the parts of the pen. Um, there is three materials, as I said. There is what I assume is anodized aluminum, but it's, it's aluminum, it's black, uh, which makes for a relatively light pen. Uh, we have a titanium model, which is also quite interesting and is quite heavy, 55 grams inked up and all that. In my experience, 50 grams is when a pen starts to feel heavy, all right? So, titanium, 55 grams. And then there is brass, which is almost 100 grams. And I know that 100 grams, that sounds like it's really light, but trust me, for a pen, that's really heavy. This is something you could use for hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, very interesting. Now, just to spare me hands, as it were, I'm going to show you the parts on this one because of the lights want to hold up. Pen. Top. Nothing, because it's a minimalist pen. So there's pretty much no features on this, no clip, nothing. Uh, it just says and so there, which I kind of like. Um, barrel. Nice. Pen unscrews. Not meant to be posted. If you really want to, you can sort of force that on there, but they are not meant to be posted. Then you have the pen. Yeah, simple, cigar shape, right? Minimalist section, tapers down, flares out a little bit. And then you have, in this case, also a black nib. So this is what I think people <clears throat> would call a stealth pen. I say, I think, because there's always discussion about what is stealth, what's not. This has all black parts, so in my mind, that is a stealth pen. <clears throat> Sorry. Cartridge converter filled pens. Standard cartridge, uh, I mean, standard international cartridge, standard converter, simple, easy, nice. So, you have that. Um, of course, the joy of this type of pen is that you could buy all of them, and yes, you can mix and match parts if that's something that, that suits your fancy. Uh, so, this is the, uh, the, the black aluminum one, um, which uh, the, the nibs are bock. I, 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 I was just checking to see if the camera would pick that up. I don't think it wood but maybe on this one the titanium pen we got with the titanium nib yeah, I don't know if you can see that but the Bok logo is on the nib titanium nibs always interesting they are a bit springy they also can actually spring they don't give a lot of feedback as to when you are pushing it too hard and then the times just stay put in my experience um, here we have a, uh, a steel um, uh, yeah that's you can't read really tell it there either. So, sorry, I can't really show you the, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the nib up close very well, but there will be high resolution pictures on the website, as you know. Okay, what do I like about these pens? What do I not like about these pens? Well, there's a couple of things that are very cool about it. Um, I, was, I was kind of, obviously, I was a bit sarcastic about minimalist pens at the start of the video. I, I don't mean to make fun of that. I know there's a market for that. I know it's popular. I know people like this. Uh, so, that's all, all great. Um, I do think these pens have some good things going for them. Uh, first of all, I kind of like the shape. It's a classic cigar shape. 
And that kind of brings me into a whole other discussion, which is what's the difference between a cigar-shaped pen and a minimalist pen? I mean, people like, say, uh, Ken Cavers uh, have been making pens, turning pens out of acrylic that pretty much look like this, and they've never been labeled minimalist pen. They're just cigar-shaped pens. And so, you know, I don't really get that, that the whole buzz over minimalism, but okay, take it for what it is. I think it's a nicely shaped pen, so I like that. I also like the nib range option, extra fine, fine, medium, broad. That's a seriously good range, and there's even 1.1 millimeter stubs, which I have on the brass model. So you get a nice range of nibs. Price-wise, um, the brass is the cheapest at $99, and then it's... Um, uh, I think it's $40 extra, yeah, it's $40 extra for a titanium nib. Uh, the titanium is $139, 40 extra for titanium nib. And the black, oh sorry, it was, it's the brass is not the cheapest, the aluminum is the cheapest, uh, with, at $79, and then $40 for a titanium nib. So, $79 for a metal pen with a converter, with a Bock nib, it will write. It's a, it's a number six nib too. I don't think that's that bad. Um, so that's nice. Uh, you can also buy uh, additional nib units. Uh, uh, black uh, nibs like, like this one are available. There's even gold units available. So you can definitely pick the nib that writes that suits your writing style and what you what you what you're going for in the pen, uh, which I like. Uh, machined out of solid block, so that's nice. Um, um, Piuma, of course, is a, is a, f a feather in Italian, so it kind of refers to a quill. And maybe we should see this as the the, the technological evolution of the quill or something. Uh, I, I you know I, I like all that. What I really like about the pens is these are solid pieces. That's just the way it is. Uh, solid pieces. And um, I happen one of my friends, uh, my my pen friend people is. Um, actually in the uh, in the army and he once he was over uh, at our place and he, he checked out some pen and he said well you know as a soldier I look at a pen and I think would I be able to use this as a last-ditch weapon um, if you buy this then for sure because I am I have very little doubt that if I put my fingers on the table and I smack them with this, I can break them. It's a really solid, heavy piece, and because it has a screw-on cap, that's that's not going to come off very easily, and that's interesting. So, am I now arguing that we should all use our pens as hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons? No, that is not what I'm saying. But there is an EDC community out there, and there is a law enforcement community out there, and if you're part of that, that is a consideration that would be fulfilled by these pens, I would say. <clears throat> now, what's interesting is I found them really comfortable. I really found them comfortable. These threads, not particularly sharp. Nice, big section. And even if you don't have to post the pen, I have a black background there. Um, even if you don't have to post the pen, it's comfortable. It's a good size. These are nicely balanced, well-made pens, fun to use. Uh, so I don't really have uh, any issues with the pen. I, I like it. I particularly like the titanium model. Titanium nibs, some people hate. I kind of like them. I think they're fun. Uh, a titanium pen, it's just cool. It's neat and it 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 may look like a pregnancy test, but that uh, that hardly matters. What really matters is that it's a cool pen. Uh, why don't we call it a time capsule? That may be a little bit, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think it's neat. I think they're neat. I enjoyed using these. Fun pens, simple, unassuming, and I like it. Um, if I have to nitpick, I don't really have any issues with the pen models themselves. They they work, the threads are not sharp, they are machined nicely, everything comes together well. All of them wrote out of the box, which is great. If I have to nitpick, then I would say that the black finish um, is a little bit prone to chipping. Uh, I haven't had any enormous chips flake off, but it's kind of hard to show on camera because they're pretty small. But there are some tiny bits where the the lacquer had or, or lacquer or whatever it is the, the the finish has chipped off a little bit. On the other hand, <clears throat> I also know that some people really like that as a sort of like use wear and tear type thing. Um, so 
Whether that's an issue is up to you. So there you have it, the Enso Puma. We need to see how the pens write. That's what's coming up next. Hope this was useful so far. High resolution pictures as well as measurements of the pen will be on the website sbrebrown.com. That's it. I will. Glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with these Enso Puma pens. Uh, I do not want to do full writing samples with all three of them, but I will write a little bit with each of them to give you an idea. I'm going to start with the... Um oh, that's a really weird E, isn't it? Sorry. Puma. Uh, this, so this is clearly the the black aluminum version, uh, and this is just the uh, the um, uh, black uh, bock nib, um, and this um, uh, the the ink is uh, I'm I'm fairly sure this was uh, what uh, sorry Montblanc uh, Royal Blue. Smooth writing. Often what you find, what I have found with, with black uh, coated nibs uh, is that they are a little, they give a bit of feedback because they coat the, uh, the, the tipping material as well and that happened in this pen too but it's, it's really quite pleasant so I, I think they, um, they, they, they did a good job with, uh, with this. Then we have this titanium pen More feedback, finer nib too. I thought that was the broad. Um, I mean, in the black one. This is uh, the new Fountain Pen Revolution ink, uh, just their blue, which I actually think is a, a nice washable blue color. I'll come back to this nib in a second. And then there is the, uh, the brass one. This is a Monteverde ink. And this is the 1.1 millimeter stub nib, which is always fun. Gives a nice bit of line variation. And this is rounded off enough, not a full italic, but more like a like a stub um, to, to not dig into the paper, but nice line variation. Okay, so here you have natural line variation because of the shape of the nib. The titanium nib offers line variation by being flexy. And I was pushing that pretty hard. I don't know if you really want to do this with a with an, a, a titanium nib because you can bend them. Uh, but as you can see, you can get quite some line variation uh, out of this pen, which uh, can be fun for quick, uh, you know, whatever, uh, signatures or stuff like that. Definitely adds some, some character to your handwriting. Um, all pens I found were pretty well adjusted, so not necessarily super wet, but flow well, no issues with that. Um, with this regular round nib, you can do reverse writing, it gets a bit drier, but as you can see it does work. Uh, so, not bad at all. The final thing I wanted to say was that with the brass pen, you really feel the weight of the pen and that makes for a, a very uh, solid uh, writing experience um, but of course it's also very heavy so I mean really heavy you do actually feel that weight so if you're looking for a pen for longer writing sessions I'm not sure if this it if this is it especially because it may feel stable but it's it's also really heavy and I do think that's going to tire out your wrist for for longer sessions Okay, there you have it. Hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.